In this video, we're going to look at this particular article, which goes into some fundamentals about how WAS, or Web Server Application Server, handles multiple directories. And yes, this article is old, it's from version 6.1, but somewhat like the 11 herbs and spices, although the marketing material from today may look very unrecognizable or barely recognizable from 10 years ago, the base assumptions, the base core architecture really hasn't changed that much and this is really really important for trying to debug problems um, with was and security and and how all of the uh, players put are put together so in the early days of web server application server when you wanted to connect over to active directory you would go like this and create something called a standalone connection and that was fine but what happens if as time went on you wanted to also connect to maybe a legacy uh, directory like e directory from novell and or you have additional directories like maybe some custom directory maybe a db2 directory if you wanted to connect all of these three together you really were out of luck and so what has changed over time is that these multiple directories let's say you have three of them so let's take our active directory and we'll take our e directory and let's also just say we have some unknown directory because we don't know at this point which one it is could be db2 it could be any sort of thing that contains interesting data usually by the way a directory will contain users and computers and essentially what ha what happens now is that instead of connecting was instead of was connecting directly you now go through an abstraction layer called VMM or the virtual member manager and what it will do is go out and contact these m multiple repositories on your behalf like so and it actually sort of aggregates all of them so and and by the way these are known as registries so Active Directory does not call itself a registry but WAS does so these are called registries and they're also called repositories in a very general sort of way just sort of like the way a, a database is also a repository and actually this these terms are the same terms that they use for e directory and for db2 so it's really these very generic terms that, that was is trying to use and essentially what happens is all of these all of these here get as i said abstracted into vmm and essentially vmm is interesting because it is a kind of ldap system and in again in sort of the early days this was actually a sort of a flat file and, and to some extent there is some flat file going on now but this is essentially the abstraction layer where something called and this is a bit long so bear with me but it is called the default w i m file based realm and that is this right here and and essentially th this is where uh, this abstraction is happening Th this is also called logical or a logical uh, logically unified registry or like we've already seen a repository so these these terms here of registry and repository you can see the idea the architecture the the goal here was to just take all of these and sort of present them to was as a single thing i.e. vmm exposed internally and you'll see this if you look in the logs as default wim file based realm and in fact if you look in the logs you would see something that would say colon and then you have a slash cn equals and then you have something and then you'd see ou equals something and then you'd see dc equals company for example 
and this should look familiar if you have worked with Active Directory because this is actually an entry from a, an Active Directory uh, registry or repository or just plain directory, which is really what it is. Now, WIM is something you'll also come across, a term you'll come across, which stands for the WebSphere Identity Manager. And its job is to do the subtraction that we've been talking about. So it's sort of, there's a layer of abstraction that happens here. It, as a matter of fact, this, you know, combining of all of these registries into one is a term you've probably already heard of. It's called federation. And so what we're really looking at here is that federation is exposed here as default WIM file-based realm. And that happens obviously through VMM. And that VMM, VMM itself happens thanks to WIM. So when all of this takes place, what you get is something, another term that, another term that WAS considers, WAS uses, is something called a realm. And a realm is, let's put this down here, this is the idea of a realm. A realm is an instance of a user registry. That's the whole point. It's an, it's an instance of a user registry. So in other words, you have a realm being able to take your AD into account and obviously your E directory and obviously your DB2, but it doesn't have to be the entire directory. In fact, you can designate that you just want one portion of this directory to be the, used, which is a sub portion of the, of the tree. Remember in the last video, we had said that we have this tree structure in all DITs and they look like this and they can you know, basically branch out like so. Well, you can say, I don't, for my realm here, I don't want the entire thing. I don't need it. I just want this particular one here because maybe this is your users here and so you're saying well I just want all the users from that container and that is a realm or that realm would contain that particular sub tree that sub container from Active Directory for example and all of this is of course LDAP right we're all of these connections are LDAP connections and we're also talking here about sub trees right these as we said these are this here is a sub tree and all of that is presented again as a logical representation, a logical registry. And if you want, uh, I should also mention there's something called uh, the base entry. So in other words, a base entry is this, right? We're talking not about the entire tree, just this portion of it that is called a sub tree. And if you'd like more information about essentially all of these terms and how they all fit together, you can take a look at this article Again, this is what we sort of started out with, but go to page two and you'll see a nice diagram here of what we're talking about where App Server 1 can look. It looks at WAS registry. That's all it knows about. So your application server, remember these are Java EE applications, and they are connecting into the server that houses them, and they don't see a directory one. They don't see a directory two. They see the WAS registry, and that is what we've been looking at up until now, and we've been showing as this kind of VMM because that's the underlying technology that it uses. And you can see additional information about all of that here. A realm within was is an instance of a user registry. The realm is the top level logical entry that represents the user registry. In a federated, which is what we've been talking about, repository configuration, the federated repository instance is the realm. And you can see this in action too. If you open up the WAS administrative console and you go down to global security, you'll start immediately seeing some of these terms we've been talking about. So here's the default WIM file-based realm. And there's a, uh, a description of what that means here. If you kind of hover over it, it indicates the identifier that the system uses to refer to the realm defined by this repository. Again, basically one realm that's aggregating all of these directories. And then you can go to configure. And actually, even before we do that, if you look at administrative security and you go, which by the way, defines who has administrative rights over this server, you can click on administrative user roles and then click on add. And you can actually query your 
repositories by clicking search and you'll see who's in there and you can in fact add a, if a given person for example to become say the admin security manager by clicking OK we're not going to do that but you could now what I was gonna say before was if you go down to a configure you can see we're set up for federated repositories and if I go to configure you'll see a list of the existing repositories so here's the file based one and here's our LDAP repository and this should look familiar if you looked at the last video which showed you that we were querying this particular one with LDAP query LDAP search and you could see what all was inside of that directory and then you have all your um, options here for example server user identity uh, connects two servers together and you can see that kind of described here distinguishes between the user identities for administrators administrators who manage the environment and server identities for identity identi authenticating server to server communications and you know you just hover over these items to give you a kind of quick explanation of what what they mean but this is a, a way of kind of showing you you know you could add additional ones you can make you know custom connection stated like you know well, just click on it you get the idea right you can you can say I want a new repository it could be LDAP it could be a custom repository it could be a file based repository like some sort of um, you know Excel document maybe um, you, you get the idea you can federate all of these things together